Real world data are rarely symmetrical in nature. To represent such asymmetric distributions, skewed bell curves are an essential tool offering visual indicators for quickly summarizing the dataset. Whether it's a lengthy tail showing outliers or a skewed peak indicating a dominant group, skewed bell curves can offer valuable insights into the data. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishraq Kader and in today's video, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a skewed bell curve in Excel. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Before we begin, let's get ourselves up to speed on what is a skewed bell curve. Skewed bell curves are associated with asymmetric or skewed distribution. Generally, there are two types of skewed bell curves. Positively skewed bell curves that have long tail pointing towards the right and negatively skewed bell curves that have a long tail pointing towards the left. Consider the student marks dataset which contains the student ID and the corresponding marks scored in physics and chemistry. Here we want to create bell curves to compare the physics and chemistry scores. Excel has built-in add-ins that allow us to perform data analysis. In this step, we'll use the analysis tool pack to generate summary statistics. But first, let's enable the add-in. I'll click on the File tab at the top left corner. Then I'll go to Options at the bottom. This opens up the Excel Options dialog box. Here, I'll go to the Add-ins section. In the Manage drop-down, I'll choose Excel Add-ins and click on Go. This opens up the Add-ins dialog box. Here, I'll check Analysis tool pack and click on OK. Back in the worksheet, I'll go to the Data tab. Here at the top left corner, we see an Analysis section with Data Analysis tool. I'll click on it. This opens up Data Analysis dialog box. Here, I'll choose Descriptive Statistics option and click on OK. For the input range, I'll click on this arrow and select from C5 to C20 range, which contains the marks for physics. For the grouped by option, I'll stick with the default columns option. I'll check the output range option and click the arrow to select my output range. I'll select the G4 cell reference. Then I'll check summary statistics and click on OK. We get a summary statistics of our dataset. We can adjust the column width Instead of column 1, I'll change the heading to Summary Statistics. Press Enter. We can also see that we have a skewness of 1.29. Second, we'll calculate the values in the bin column. I'll go to the E5 cell reference, press Equal, then I'll select the H6 cell reference which contains the mean value of our dataset. I'll press F4 to lock in both the row and column references. Insert a minus operator, then type 3, then insert multiplication operator, which is the asterisk symbol. After that, I'll select the standard deviation value in the H10 cell reference. Again, press F4 to lock in both the row and column references. Press Enter. In the E6 cell, I'll type equal, then I'll select the E5 cell reference, insert the plus operator, and again, I'll select the standard deviation value in the H10 cell reference. Press F4 to lock in both the row and column references. Press Enter. After that, I'll select the E6 cell and apply the fill handle tool to copy the formula into the cells below. That's it, we've calculated our bin values. In step 3, we'll generate the histogram table with the help of analysis tool pack add in. I'll click the data tab. Then at the top right corner, I'll choose data analysis tools. This opens up data analysis dialog box. Here I'll choose the histogram option and click on OK. For the input range, I'll click on the arrow and select from C5 to C20 range, which contains the physics scores. For the bin range, I'll click on the arrow again and select from E6 to E10 cell reference. 
I'll check the output range option. Again, click on the arrow and select the J4 cell reference. Lastly, I'll click on OK and we get a histogram table. In the final step, I'll select the J6 to K10 cell reference from the histogram table. Then I'll click the Insert tab. In the chart section, I'll click on Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart drop down and select Scatter with Smooth Lines. I'll resize the chart. We can see a positively skewed bell curve since we have a long tail towards the right. Lastly, I'll select the chart title and type positively skewed bell curve. Finally, the skewed bell curve for physics scores is ready. In order to get the skewed bell curve distribution of the chemistry scores, I'll repeat the same steps as shown previously. First, I'll go to the Data tab. At the top right corner, I'll go to Data Analysis. Here, I'll choose Descriptive Statistics and click on OK. Since my data sets have similar structures, so I do not need to change the inputs, straight away I can click on OK and we get a summary statistics of our data set. I'll rename the column header to Summary Statistics. We can also see that we get a skewness of minus 1.34. In the next step, we'll calculate the bin values. So I'll go to the E5 cell, press equal, then I'll select the mean value which is 40.43 in the H6 cell reference. I'll press F4 to lock in both the row and column references, insert a minus operator, then I'll type 3, then insert the multiplication operator which is the asterisk symbol, then I'll select the standard deviation value of 11.63 in the H10 cell reference. Press F4 to lock in both the row and column references. Press Enter. In the E6 cell, I'll type equal, select the E5 cell reference, insert a plus operator, then I'll select the standard deviation value in the H10 cell reference. Press F4 to lock in the cell reference and press Enter. Afterward, I'll select the E6 cell and apply the Fill Handle tool to copy the formula into the cells below. In step 3, I'll click the Data tab again, head back to Data Analysis. This time I'll select the Histogram option and click on OK. Again, due to the similar structures of my dataset, I can press OK to get the results. Eventually, we get the histogram table. Lastly, I'll select the J5 to K9 cell reference from the histogram table. Then I'll go to the Insert tab. In the chart section, I'll click on Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart drop-down and select Scatter with Smooth Lines. Let me resize the chart. We can see we get a negatively skewed bell curve since we have a long tail pointing towards the left. Lastly, I'll select the chart title and type Negatively Skewed Bell Curve. That's it. We've obtained the skewed bell curve distribution of chemistry scores. In this demonstration, I have shown you a step-by-step -step guide on making a skewed bell curve. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge to make your own skewed bell curve according to your requirement and convenience. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemi.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!